What is going on guys, Ben Glutti here coming back at you with another video today. We are back on Madden NFL 18. Finally, I think you guys have been liking the quizzes quite a lot, but uh, we are back on Madden. If you guys haven't checked out any of the quiz videos, they're so much fun to do and it can test your knowledge as well. But we are back on the rebuild grind. The Jacksonville Jaguars are on the table for us. And just looking at them, you can see they have a very talented group of players at the top. Calais Campbell is old. AJ Boye, very young, talented corner from Houston. This is going to be his first year with the Jaguars. And of course, Allen Robinson, great big receiving target for Blake Bortles or whoever we decide to rock with that quarterback for the future. But, you know, I'm excited. Let's get into the rebuild with a roster breakdown coming up next. Okay, here we go. I mean, looking at it, it doesn't seem all that bad. Of course, Cam Robinson has an 82 overall. I don't know why that's an of course. I don't agree with that potentially off the bat start his career i don't know if that's potentially accurate uh, i don't know why i keep dropping the word potentially i didn't love him really at all um i think he needs to work on footwork quite a bit he kind of seems like an eric flowers type player right out of college which would worry a jaguars fan or two patrick omame is pretty good though brandon linder one of the top interior offensive linemen in the nfl in my opinion and he's still very very young aj can jeremy parnell Parnell looks like an idiot. I don't know what that face is. It looks like it looks honestly like a mugshot where they said, you know, stand on the wall. Are you drunk? All right, seems like a yes. Snap the picture. And then there that is. Awful. Mercedes Lewis needs to go. He's very old. Marquise Lee, Allen Robinson, D.D. Westbrook, Allen Hearns. It's a decent group of receivers. I don't know what we're going to do with them quite yet. We got our work her, workhorse franchise back in Leonard Fournette, one of my favorite players coming into the draft, especially skill-wise. He's incredible. Also got Chris Ivory, TJ Yeldon. I still don't know why the Jags brought in Chris Ivory. They've been giving him a decent amount of carries, but I just don't think it was a good idea. TJ Yeldon was developing pretty well. Blake Bortles is kind of a slippery slope. Don't know what we're going to be doing with him just yet. He's kind of at that point where he's not old enough to where it's like, all right, you need to go. But he's not good enough to the point as where like we can really build around him. By the way, if you've never seen one of these before, this is a fantasy style rebuild. Anything goes in these, whether it's trades, free agency, drafting, we can do anything. If you'd like a more realistic approach, that's another series on the channel. Go to my channel, click playlist, click Madden 18 realistic rebuilds, and you can see a very, very realistic approach, including actual rookies. But in this, we're playing the game. We're doing whatever we can to win. On the defensive side of the ball, we have Sean Gibson, Telvin Smith, Paul Pazlosny, Miles Jack. Is that Lorente McRae? Is that how you say that? It is. Uh, it's Barry Church, AJ Boye, Jalen Ramsey, Alvin, Alvin, Aaron Colvin. And on the defensive line, we have Calais Campbell, Malik Jackson, Abra Jones, Yannick Ngakwe. We also have Dante Fowler, the former first round pick, Dwayne Smoot. Really liked him. I think he's coming out of Illinois, if I'm not mistaken. He is. Uh, Sheldon Day, even. Like, this is a very talented team. It's all about development over time. Paul Pazlesny is going to play left to linebacker. We're going to start Miles Jack at middle linebacker. He has quick development, so that's going to help us quite a bit. But this has been a very, very long intro with not much happening other than me breaking down the actual Jags lineup here. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Jags. The, the Jags. I feel like uh, I'm kind of a reverse bandwagon in a lot of ways. But uh, I'm rooting for the Jags. I want the Jags to succeed. Succeed, not secede from the Union. Um, whatever, I'm rambling. Let's get straight into the trades. I want to address the offense, pretty much. I don't even know what I want to do. Do I want draft picks? i got to figure out like what this lineup is going to be, but you guys are going to see it before we start season number one. So without further ado, let's get into it. Fucking any day now. Also, these are some of the top players I'm trying to trade. Paul Pazlosny, Chris Ivory, and Mercedes Lewis. It's notable that Paul Pazlosny moves up to an 89 overall when you switch him to outside linebacker, as most linebackers do when you, or inside linebackers do when you move them to the outside. So I didn't cheat by changing his overall or anything. And actually, I think he plays outside linebacker in real life now. It doesn't matter. His overall is up. That's only going to increase his trade value. Uh, I'm trying to move him. He's just too old. 32. Chris Ivory's 29 and a backup running back. Mercedes Lewis is like 33. No thank you. All right, so first trade went through. For some reason, the Seahawks really wanted a fullback. Cause it, I guess that's an instrumental part of their offense. I can't even name a Seahawks fullback. Actually, I probably can. Is, uh... No, he probably still isn't on the team. I know 
my man, Real Rob Report, is not the team. Michael Robinson for a while now. I can't even name who the Seahawks' starting fullback is, so I don't know why they want a fullback. But uh, maybe that's why. They Maybe they don't have a good one. But Paul Pazosny, Tommy Bahannon, and a third-round pick for B. Wags, one of the most talented linebackers in the NFL. And uh, we got him for pretty much nothing. Move Miles Jack back to outside linebacker. Telvin Smith is now on the left side. Linebacking core is looking really nice. I'm probably trying to upgrade at the safety position. I don't really want Barry Church. I might draft a safety. I'm not really sure. Um, and I definitely want to trade one of these defensive linemen. I think it's going to be Calais Campbell, and I'll tell you why. Even though he's incredible, still amazing in real life too, even despite being 31 years of age, 6'8". He's, he's an absolute monster. But Calais Campbell is a 92 overall. He will not be next year. He'll be a 90, maybe an 89. Regression hits hard in every Madden game since they've introduced that as a thing. I think it was last year, maybe two years ago, um, where it was really pounded in, pounded home, hit home. I don't know what I'm saying. That regression was going to be a big thing. Calais Campbell is not going to be useful to me in two or three years when we're still going to be in the thick of this rebuild. I've got to trade Calais Campbell, and that actually gives me a great opportunity to start Yannick Ngakwe at right end, which I am more than excited to do. So Calais Campbell's got to be the next to go. Okay, I've made this trade. Probably bewilders a few of you. Don't need Chris Ivory. We have TJ Yeldon, so he's pretty much valueless to me. And this is the team that he had the most value towards. He was the only green of any team in the league. We also trade Earl Watford, backup left guard, no need for it, and a fifth round pick for Malik Hooker. In real life, I think he's going to develop into the one of uh, one of the best safeties and one of the most entertaining safeties in the NFL. I got to slow down when I speak because I'm not making sentences. But Malik Hooker is tremendous. I don't know how he's going to perform in game. I don't know what his development trade is, but I'm excited to find out. He's going to start at free safety over to Sean Gibson, and uh, I'm still trying to trade Calais Campbell, which would open up a lot of cap room. He is a 10.7 mil per year cap hit. Colts would like him. Colts are not going to get him. So this is the trade I ended up completing. It's Calais Campbell, Alan Hearns for a first round pick for the Bears. I think that pick is going to be tremendously valuable. Only reason why I did it, Calais Campbell is going to go downhill. I think the first round pick is going to be incredible. Alan Hearns, he's a fourth string wide receiver with us right now. I want to continue to develop D.D. Westbrook or go a different route at wide receiver. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so Blake Bortles is gone. That's just what happened. Mercedes Lewis also gone. We got a first-round pick from the San Francisco 49ers. We got rid of a ton of cap hit. And uh, Chad Henney's the man now. We're going to tank and hopefully do pretty poorly, get a top pick, draft some high-quality talent. It's just the way it went. I'll see you guys at the midseason mark. This is the team. You guys know what it is. Yannick Ngakwe, Dante Fowler Jr. starting at the ends. And um, Molly Cooker is our starting free safety. So again, I will see you guys at the midseason mark. So at the midseason mark, we are 2-5. and five. Didn't expect much out of this team. It just wasn't good enough. No quarterback. We have Chad Henney. Who doesn't count? Um, Allen Robinson is a free agent, though. Hopefully we can entice him into staying in Jacksonville, although I don't know why anyone would. Jacksonville is a terrible place if you've ever been, in my opinion. Uh, wow, Telvin Smith, also a free agent. Same thing with Marquise Lee, Patrick Omame, Aaron Colvin, Jason Myers, starting kicker. I'm going to try to bring back every single one of these players, up to Jason Myers, of course. We have the money to do so. All right, so we brought back everyone except for Aaron Colvin, who didn't like anything about the offer I gave him. But the more I looked at it, the more I'm like, I don't really want Aaron Colvin that much, so I'm going to lowball him try to sign him to a short deal. He wasn't having it. And then um, Marquise Lee wanted more salary, and I'm just not sure I'm ready to give it to him. Gross. I'm not sure I'm willing to pay him that much. So, uh, I don't know. I probably won't. All right, so obviously we did not make the playoffs. We finished 4-12, and which I think was probably good enough for the worst team in the NFL. That's okay, though. We're not going <laughs> to... We're not going to worry about silly things like records and all that. Chad Henney. Hold on a minute. Keith Winning. Not bad, you know. One for three for negative six yards. Could be worse, I, I guess. I've never seen anything worse. Chad Henney was sacked 56 times. That's a few. 
It's few for sure. Leonard Fournette, ooh, abysmal rookie season. 3.5 yards on the ground per carry. Six touchdowns, not even 900 yards receiving. Marquise Lee led the way. Not too many touchdowns. Of course, this was Chad Henney. Things are going to open up once we get a quarterback on this team. Sacks allowed. Cam Robinson led up 24. That is not good. Tackles, though. A lot of uh, defenders with above 100 tackles. Miles Jack, Bobby Wagner, Jalen Ramsey, even at cornerback. Barry Church as well. Tackles for loss, 14 from Malik Jackson. Quarterback sacks, 8.5 from Malik Jackson, 7 from Dante Fowler Jr. Interceptions, 3 from a litany of players. Miles Jack, Jalen Ramsey, and A.J. Boye. Force fumbles. No one with really more than two. Bobby Wagner with two fumble recoveries led the team. And then defensive touchdowns, one for Barry Church. Let's check out awards. I hope Leonard Fournette run a one offensive rookie of the year. I do. Who is the MVP, though? Who is the MVP? I can only stall for so long, Madden, was asking the same question over and over again. Please tell me. Aaron Rodgers of the 11 and 5. Green Bay Packers. I doubt we're going to see any of whatever team I am. The Jaguars in here. Uh, AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Le'Veon Bell. No Jags. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Ryan Shazier. That's weird. Look at this. Steelers, Steelers. Raiders, Raiders. Patriots, Patriots. Interesting. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Deshaun Watson. Leonard Fournette finishes in second. D.D. Westbrook finishes in seventh. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Miles Garrett. And then Malik Hooker finishes in eighth. So nobody won anything. Welcome to Jacksonville. I'll see you guys in the offseason. I'm just not interested in bringing back either Aaron Colvin or Marquise Lee. I don't think they're going to be uh, in my long-term plans. So I'm just not going to re-sign them. Simple as that. Don't want to waste the potential salary cap on players that we could sign in free agency who might demand big money. So we're just going to simulate to that point and uh, see who there is to sign. So Cameron Brait is the only free agent that's really appealing to me at all. The rest are either too old or not attractive enough um, overall wise or, or looks well. I don't know. Maybe I'm into that. But uh, let's simulate to the next week, do some more scouting, and I guess I will see you guys. Holy shit, he declined it? What the fuck? I've never seen that before. Cameron... I'm mad. <laughs> Why would he do that? Yo, you... Alright, I didn't see that one coming. Guess we're stuck with Michael Rivera, that'll be cool. So here we are in the draft. We have an interesting situation. The third and fourth pick in the first round, as well as the 14th. I don't really know who's going to be available to either pick. We also have the 36th pick overall, which is the fourth in the second round. I think I'm just going to take the gamble, simulate to our pick. Who's ever there is there. I'd like there to be a quarterback available, but he is the first overall pick. And then the Buccaneers take whoever they take. It doesn't matter. I'll see you at my pick. All right, so with this trade, I have traded the number three overall pick to the Browns for their number five and their number 11. This is pretty big for us, as that puts us in a way better position to draft exactly who I want for the best value. And I think I'm going to trade down my number four as well. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what I even want from this. And with my number four overall pick, I've traded it to the Jets for their first next year, their second this year both second round picks so we're pretty much out of um, out of luck if I want anyone after my fifth pick but I really don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna need it you know so uh, let's go ahead and take some players I, I didn't, it didn't feel right whatever I just said it didn't sound right at all with my first pick I am taking Moses Wutan out of pit 6-4 Decently fast for a 4-5-4. Not bad. Insane vertical. Great broad jump. Is strong. Is fairly quick. Great top three skills. Here we go. Welcome to the team. He is an 82 overall with quick development. He's ranked number four in the entire draft. We took him at number five. He looks phenomenal. Decent enough speed. 88 is not bad at all. 87 route running is great. 87 catching, great. 94 excel, great. 86 catching traffic, great. 93 spectacular catches, phenomenal. Amazing release, agility, ball carrier, vision, jumping. What a player. 82 overall receiver in the first round. With my number 11 overall pick, I am taking Bennett Short, who looks ungodly. 
amazing top three skills, especially when you see his type is zone and he has A minus hit power, B minus zone is really, really good. And especially his combine even further solidifies how good of a player he is. Insanely fast, 448 blazing speed for a safety, insanely agile and quick with a three cone and the 20 yard shuttle near the top of his class. And then insanely strong with an amazing 26 reps of 225 for a safety. He's only 200 pounds, he's 6'3". This honestly looks like the reincarnation, even though he's not dead, but of Steve Atwater into the NFL, even though he came out of Ohio State. Show me something, Bennett Short. Superstar development, 79 overall, 90 speed, 82 zone, 80 tackle, 80 pursuit, 94 acceleration, 90 hit power. Play rec is low enough, we can boost that. That's gonna make his overall go up a bunch. Same thing with awareness. I'm so, so happy with our top two picks so far. And I think number 14 is gonna be very, very rewarding as well. And now my quarterback of the future, Kerry Davidson out of Florida State. Great top three skills. I don't even care about the, the combine. Like you can see, he's decently strong. I guess it'll contribute to throw power maybe. I don't know. Top three skills are right where I want them to be. Kerry Davidson. 80 overall with quick development, ranked number six in the draft. We took him at 14. This has been a phenomenal draft class. Like I could not have asked for a better one so far for the most part. Like maybe you turn those two quick developments into a superstar, but two players with quick development who are either a 79 or an 80 plus, and then one who's superstar, who's a 79, and then I don't even know what I'm saying here. We're in the second round. I don't even know if I want to take this or turn it into a first next year. There's so many possibilities of things that I can do right now. And with this pick, I didn't think he'd be available. Bruce Camelot is available. Great 40. Well, not 40. Great combine overall with vertical. He's extremely quick, but his top three skills are also incredible for a tight end. He's 6'6". He's available at this spot. I did not think he was going to be. But uh, lo and behold, he is. Bruce Camelot out of pit. Show me something. 77 overall. He's ranked number 34. We took him at number 36. He's not the fastest, obviously. We knew that. But the rest looks great. All we have to do is upgrade it, like awareness, run block, and route running. And we've got ourselves a franchise tight end. So this draft has just been, been so, so rewarding. Bears are offering me a first runner next year. And that is not going to be the 32nd overall pick unless they made a trade. The Bears suck. I'm doing that trade for sure. And uh, let's go ahead and simulate to the next pick. I wonder who the Bears are going to take. I don't, I don't really even care. I don't know why I said that. I don't wonder at all. Whoever, it doesn't matter. All right, we're finally back in uh, franchise mode after not being able to connect to the servers for a little while. And I got a feeling about Darius here. I think he has a potential to be one of the greatest guards we've ever drafted. Good top three skills. You could even say it's the great combine. We're drafting him. 78 overall he's ranked 29th in the entire draft we took him at 47 88 strength is good 85 run block 84 impact blocking 77 pass block isn't even that bad it's just awareness i boost that up he's going to be incredible you could you could say one of the greatest players in the league i'm here all week and here i'm taking clayton grimes i really don't have a good feeling about him he doesn't really look amazing he looks okay good backup that's kind of what i'm looking to draft in here 72 overall not bad he's ranked number 68 we took him at 100 it's good value great run blocker that's pretty much all we were looking for i guess nothing crazy and to wrap things up here in the sixth round we're taking tyler shepherd a tight end out of georgetown looks okay for the sixth round so i'm gonna take him 70 overall he's ranked number 149 we took him at 164 again not the fastest but he looked decent enough and that is the end of the draft, so let's go ahead and advance to season number two, where I expect pretty big things. Not maybe the playoffs, but I expect a huge step to be made from this team in terms of development and upgrading and things like that. I think this team's going to be a real, uh, real threat in season number three. This is the draft class, by the way, in case you forgot. I think it's pretty much stacked. Oh, we had another pick, too. Carter Shaughnessy slipped through the cracks pretty fast. Um, but yeah, I think stacked draft class from Moses Wooten... Wutan, who has quick development, to Bennett Short, who's a 79 overall, but has superstar, and then our quarterback of the future, Kerry Davidson, who's an 80 overall with quick. There's a lot of potential here. I'm a huge fan of this draft class. Even the great right guard we drafted, or uh, Bruce Kamalot. I mean, like, this is a very good class. I expect, again, big things. We're also going to re-sign Chris Ivory from free agency. That's pretty fun. So... 
with the emergence of our safeties and Malik Hooker and of course the draft pick, um, we don't want his career here to be you know short lived. <laughs> I'm trading Barry Church. Um, like he can pray all he wants about it, but uh, we are trading him for probably an offensive lineman. That's the plan anyway. I try to move DeGrate over to right tackle, and I don't want to do that. I'm just going to move him back to right guard and find a suitable right tackle replacement. All right, we have Jack Muhort, and he plays tackle now. Fun fact. I traded it to Sean Gibson, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. Barry Church is still on the team. He's not going to be for long. All right, we're trading Barry Church in a late first-round pick as well as a fourth for my guy, Kevin Johnson. And before you say anything, yes, my guy. Cue the clip. What's going on? This is Kevin Johnson with the Houston Texans. Make sure y'all subscribe to Bangle on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Get, with, get hip, get with the churn, baby. All right, so this is the team that we're going to be playing with. New faces on the line. We have the great one. We also have Jack Muhor, Ben Kamalot making his rookie debut at tight end. Of course, Michael? That doesn't sound right to me. Moses Wutan at wide receiver. Leonard Fournette's up to a 91 overall, so he's improving quite quickly. Kerry Davidson, our rookie quarterback, is an 80 overall. Linebacking course looking pretty nice. Of course, Bennett Short starting at strong safety. Malik Hooker at free safety. Cornerbacks, everything's the same except for now Kevin Johnson's on the team. Defensive line is looking really nice. I'm excited. This could be a very good season for us. I will see you at the midseason mark. We're going to simulate right there. So at the midseason mark, we are 4-3. and three. Not that bad, if I'm being honest. We're currently at a pace where we could make a play for the division. As you can see, Kevin Johnson is a free agent while well, pending impending so we're gonna try and bring him back same thing with Dante Fowler jr. same thing with TJ Yeldon Michael Rivera can leave though all right so we brought back Kevin Johnson TJ Yeldon and Dante Fowler jr. I have no care for the rest of them so they're just gone or whatever they're gonna do time to scout and time to go to the playoffs hopefully we make it actually I'm gonna upgrade players first then time for the playoffs all right here we go to the playoffs and we finish 11 and 5 second in the AFC South but that is good enough for a wild card spot rookie quarterback Kerry Davidson not that bad for Madden simulation terms to be honest 4100 yards 32 touchdowns 18 picks is kind of a lot though we're gonna try and bring that down Leonard Fournette with a much better season although TJ Yeldon 14 touchdowns as the backup Leonard Fournette can't fumble four times that can't happen uh, really good rookie season for uh, Moses Wutan here. Nearly 100 catches, nearly 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns. Oh, Allen Robinson, almost 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns. D.D. Westbrook even did pretty well from the slot. Rookie touchdown, uh, Bruce Kalmalot could have done better. Overall, not bad. Blocking. Uh, offensive line performed much, much better with this new group. And then defensively, we had so many more players with 100-plus tackles last year. We only have two this year. But that's fine. Tackles for loss, 14 from Malik Jackson. He leads again. Quarterback sacks. Finally, someone in double digits. It's Dante Fowler Jr. with 10.5. Avery Jones with 9.5. Malik Jackson with 9. Yannick Ngakwe only with 5.5. Interceptions, though. 3 from Kevin Johnson. 3 from Jalen Ramsey. Both of those led the team. Forced fumbles. We have 3 from Sheldon Day. He also had 3 fumble recoveries. Both led the team. And then defensive touchdowns. I don't see any. We got one, though. It's Donald Payne out of Stetson. All right. Yearly awards, we have Tom Brady as the MVP. Cody Kessler is on the Giants and was third in MVP race. As a Giants fan, that is interesting to see, to say the least. AFC Office Player of the Year goes to Tom Brady. Ooh, Kerry Davidson at number nine. That's got to be Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Derek Johnson. Hook him horns. Bobby Wagner in there at number five. No other Jags. Show me Kerry Davidson. Yes, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Even Moses Wudon finished in second. There we go. Bruce Camelot at fifth. Hopefully that's superstar development now for Kerry Davidson. I would love that. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Taiwan Fair. Bennett Short finishes in sixth. Just short of that Defensive Rookie of the Year mark. That should be a lot of XP, though, for my man Kerry Davidson. And it is 37K. Keep in mind, we did upgrade him at the, uh, the midseason mark up to an 84. Offensive Rookie of the Year gave him a ton of XP. No 
uh, increase in development though. 45k for Moses Wutan though. And that didn't even give him any increase in development trade either. Plus 32k XP though for the Pro Bowl. And we have a lot of XP all over the place. I will be using a lot of this. Malik Hooker. What is this for? Pro Bowl. Damn, I'll take it. I will take it. All right. I'm going to use some of this XP before we play our wildcard matchup against the Browns in here too. This is a weird time. Rashad Green somehow made the Pro Bowl. I don't know how. He got plus quick development uh, and 32k XP. So he actually could look pretty disgusting depending on how this upgrading se uh, session goes. 78, not bad. Not great though. All right, this is the upgraded team heading into the first round of the playoffs. It looks really, really good. Kerry Davidson is already a 90 overall. And uh, I think in the offseason, we're just going to have to address wide receiver, more offensive line, and then tight end maybe. Defense, I think, is superb overall. The pass rushers, I think they're fine. They're good enough. Cornerbacks are great. But here we go. Against the Cleveland Browns, jumping right in year two. We should be able to beat them. Should be able to. All right, down to the Browns. Well, now it's only 19-14, headed into the fourth quarter. Now 22 to 14, 20 to 22. Please, can we score? 25. We scored 26-25. That's the game. Somehow, oh, Drew Brees is the quarterback of the uh, Browns. That makes sense. That's how the Browns are half decent. Kerry Davidson leads us to a fourth quarter comeback in the victory in his first ever playoff game in his rookie season. Way to go. Davidson is the man. Let's go ahead and advance to uh, the wild card round. Nope, that's where we just were. To the divisional round. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. New England Patriots here in the divisional. It's, I'm not a fan of this matchup at all. Oh no. Oh, that makes it closer. Only down, I guess, 24 to 10 now. 16 to 24. These missed, missed extra points and Sim have to stop. Oh my goodness. It's 40 to 22. 47 22. This is annihilation. 47 29. It's a tough game. Tough game. That's all you can really say. Tom Brady threw for four touchdowns on our defense. So he's year three, right? All right, Michael Rivera is our only free agent to bring back, and I just don't want to. I'm also not convinced that Bruce Kamalot is the uh, is the answer at tight end, so I'm trying to either draft one or sign one. Not Michael Rivera, though. No way. No way, Jose. Get it, Rivera? I don't know if there's anything to get there. There's really not. Delaney Walker, that's somebody to get, though. Maybe. 35. I'm into it. Brandon Scherf is the play. Upgrade on the offensive line, for sure. Needs to happen. I'm also in on Jesse James. You can tell he's a good listener. Well, it depends on what side of the uh, head you speak to him on. But I'm in on Jesse James. Hopefully he chooses to sign with us. I think we're a Super Bowl contender. I don't know why he would not. So let's go ahead and advance to the next week. Hopefully I get two of my targets in Brandon Scherf and Jesse James. Nope, fucking Jesse James didn't like my comments about him. That's fair and he chooses to go elsewhere. Brandon Scherf, though, he's on the team now, and the offensive line is looking very good. All right, we have the number nine overall pick, and I believe the 27th overall pick in the first round. I'm trying to move up with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm. Yes, Pittsburgh Steelers. Pause the draft, Bengal. I don't need to, okay? A first this year and a first next year gets it done. That's a very fine trade for me, considering I think we're going to be in the running for the Super Bowl next year. So, um, good player was not drafted. I didn't think that the Bucks needed that position. I know they didn't. Colts, same deal. Didn't think the Dolphins would take it, whatever that position might be, at number two. So, we're golden. With my first pick, I am taking a tight end. Amari Reeves out of Auburn. We know about... People named Amari out of Alabama schools. Amari Cooper, for those who didn't pick up on that reference or know that Auburn is in Alabama. He's fast as hell. He can catch well. Amari Reeves, 79 overall quick development. That's what I like to see. 82 speed, 79 catching. Got to boost route running and awareness and I guess run block. We got ourselves a tight end here. New starting tight end. I think it was well worth the trade up. 
All right, Craig Goodley's one of the slowest players I've ever seen at the wide receiver position, which means I'm interested. Actually, that is not true. Uh, what was his name? Went to Mississippi State. Dreadlocks, forehead as big as anything I've ever seen. Looked up when he ran the 40. It was so slow. Hold on, I'll be back. Watch this. This is hilarious. Deronia Wilson out of Mississippi State. First 40 time was a 4-9. Look at him when he runs. Look at this. This is hilarious. I've never seen anything in my life as funny as this. Look at him. I swear. <laughs> oh, he's, he's so slow. He read 4-9 and 4-8-5 as a receiver. Oh, my. That was on my Instagram, by the way, if you care about following it. The correct link may or may not be in the description. I'm not really sure. It's Bengal YouTube on Instagram. I don't really care if you follow me or not. But uh, we're going to be taking this wide receiver, Craig Goodley. Are you good? Yes, he is good. Is he slow? Of course he is. Quick development, though. Unlike his actual abilities, he has quick development. Because he's definitely not actually quick. He's going to be a really good, I think, um, third option for us. Simulate to the second round. I don't really have any real positions in need, I think, at this point. So I might even trade D.D. Westbrook and a second round pick for a better receiver try to oh we almost got 30 year old julio how can i make this happen i don't think i can how about 31 year old antonio brown please 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 give me a b give me a antonio brown quit stalling yes <laughs> this trading system is so broken a second and a third and dd westbrook for antonio brown i think that solved their receiver issue Screw this draft. I don't have any picks. I don't need them. We got AB. All right, so this is the team headed into the third season. Really? Just the third season? This team looks sick for just the third season. Offensive line's nice. Receiving core is obviously really, really nice. Kerry Davidson is playing up to a 92 overall, and there's still XP that I can use. This team is stacked. This team is so, so good. Defensively, we're getting there. Not quite there yet. But this is a talented team. I have high hopes for this team. Very high hopes. I'm going to go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark. I will see you there. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I did. I want to upgrade my players first. I want to upgrade my players first. Just got that canceling auto sim in there before week one. That was good timing. All right, so this is the team. Bunch of 90 overall plus players. Um, including Kerry Davidson. That's a good sign. Defensively, things look about the same as AJ Boye. Whoa, 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 whoa. I recall him being a 90 plus. He's only 28. Is he already regressing? Why is getting older? Bad year, AJ Boye. Why? I'll see you guys at the midseason mark, I guess. Oh my goodness, back to ways of old. We're finally winning in rebuild again. Six and one at the midseason mark. And because people always question, mainly Jerome PKR, because he's a little cunt. I've got a team schedule. Show you guys. Obviously did not force wins. And then pe people who are stupid see, oh, that doesn't say none. It's a bye week. There's no, you can't not win. Whatever. Don't be stupid, stupid. Let's go. Let's use our XP. And uh, let's use our coach XP as well. Here is the team, by the way. Nothing major to report. But uh, small upgrades here and there. Team's looking pretty disgusting, I would say, overall. Which is never a bad thing. And less disgusting is it bad me you mean in a bad way see me in the playoffs all right i have a ton of coach xp and i don't see us with a matchup we finished 13 and 3 how did we get there 4800 yards 37 tds and only 11 picks from carrie davidson we'd like to see that number in single digits but it is madden sim Leonard Fournette continues to get better with a monstrous season. Nearly 1,500 yards, 19 touchdowns, 4.6 uh, on the ground average. Allen Robinson, a ton of catches, 8 touchdowns, 1,100 yards. Antonio Brown, nearly 100 catches, 1,300 yards, 12 touchdowns. Amari Reeves, a ton of catches, 800 yards nearly and 6 touchdowns. Moses Wooten had like an offseason, and he still didn't even perform that badly for a third receiver. Cam Robinson still sucks. Defensively, Bobby Wagner had a ton of tackles, 143 tackles for loss, 15 from Avery Jones. How about quarterback sacks? Are we getting after the QB? Kind of. Malik Jackson, 10.5, 9.5 for Dante Fowler Jr. 
nine for Yannick Ngakwe. Interceptions, four for Bobby Wagner. Man, our defense sucks. How? Four fumbles. I see four. Four from B-Wags and no recovery, so only, like, what is that, five total? That's pretty weak. Touchdowns, none? No defensive touchdowns. That is unfortunate. Aaron Rodgers wins MVP. Kerry Davidson in second. No. That sucks. Leonard Fournette at number eight. Cody Kessler. I don't know how you're there. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Kerry Davis, and he should have a ton of XP. Leonard Fournette at number four. Defensive Player of the Year, CJ Mosley. Bobby Wagner at number three. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Brian Manningham. Give that to Amari Reeves, man. That's ridiculous. I don't even think we're going to have anyone in this. We don't. What's the XP situation looking like? It could be disgusting. Could be absolutely filthy. 41K, 24K. Yeah, we have a lot. We have a lot overall. Okay, here's the upgraded team. It looks insane. Offensive line is very nice, but in his second season, Kerry Davidson is playing up to a 98 overall. Leonard Fournette is an absolute tank. Defensively, uh, a bunch of players look really nice overall. No one really stands out too much besides uh, B-Wags and Jalen Ramsey, but everyone's a really high 80 for the most part. Like, the lowest overall is an 84 from Dante Fowler Jr., and the rest is like 85, 86, high 80s. We got it. First round bye. Here we go. Who are we playing in the divisional? It is the 8-8 eight and eight Cincinnati Bengals. All right. Here we go. 93 overall that they're 86, and I'm sure that 93 will even go up to a 94 or a 95 overall into our next game. I'm excited, man. We can do this. All right, here we go. Out to an early 13. Make it 16. Make it 19-3 to three lead. 19-9 to nine now. 22 to 16 headed into the half the Bengals are actually coming back here 22 all don't do this to me 29 22 score again 32 22 score again 39 22 that's game that's game they can't come back now 39 to 29 is your final score here at Everbank Field in Jacksonville I'm not even gonna see the stats because I don't care all I care about is the W shout out to Chicago for throwing it up we're going up here to the championship game, the AFC championship game, and soon after that, it's got to be the Super Bowl. How soon, you ask? Two weeks. It's the Patriots again. This time, it's a different set of circumstances. Both 13 and 3. We are now a something overall, 93 overall. I thought that would go up. It did not. Usually it does. 93 overall against 93 overall. This is as even as it gets. We probably have home field advantage, though. I, I can't say that probably. I have no idea who would have it in this scenario. But I hope we do. I don't think that would do anything for Madden Sim, though. But, hey, can't hurt. This was a decent start, all right. Down. Well, okay, this is a weird game. They just scored really quickly. 27-20. to 20. They seem to answer almost immediately as soon as we score. This is a really high-scoring affair, though. There's no defense being played. 41-36, we have the lead. 42-41, now 47-42, Jacksonville, hold on and score, 50-42, and we hold them, they don't get the two-point conversion, and we win, and Jacksonville is headed to the Super I just threw up in my fucking mouth. Kerry Davidson, with 153.0, rating out of 158.3, 34 for 40, 449 yards, five touchdowns. That's, that's got to be a perfect, perfect rating. That's insane. How is it not? Jesus, Kerry Davidson, have a day. I almost just threw up. That was so good. All right, here we go. Against the Seattle Seahawks. This is a game. Here we go. I'm ready to play the full game. I'm ready for the Jacksonville Jaguars to be Super Bowl champions. What would win in a fight, a Jaguar or a Seahawk? basically a Jaguar or an Osprey. I think it's pretty clear that Jaguar would beat the shit out of an Osprey. Although, Ospreys can fly. You got the aerial attack going, but what if the Jaguar catches it? Why is this even a thing that I'm talking about? I don't know, but it's something to think about. All right, here we go. The Super Bowl. Oh, I just did next quarter. I did not mean to do that. That's unfortunate. We're down by seven already. I don't like that. I don't like this start, man. Down by 14. 
We answer right back though. Score a touchdown. Please. Please get in the end zone. We can't score. Just as I say that we score. We score again. 17 to 14. Now 20 to 17 Seattle. 23-17. We score a touchdown. We're up by one point. And we win! Oh my god. How did Seattle lose? How did they lose? That's like a field goal away from winning the game. We clutched up on defense, and the Jacksonville Jaguars miraculously somehow are Super Bowl champions. This is the first Super Bowl we've won um, in any rebuild this year, and it happened in just three seasons. Holy cow. I mean, the Jaguars are a good team, but you know, it's, I think it's Kerry Davidson that led us here, and our rookies performed so, so well that led us to the Super Bowl championship, to this Lombardi Trophy. AB, I totally forgot he was on the team. Seven receptions, 83 yards, no touchdowns. I guess that's Super Bowl MVP. Don't ask me how, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense that that would be that way. I want us to get to the podium, show them lift the Lombardi Trophy, give it to Kerry Davidson, let him raise it up high. And they're giving it to Antonio Brown. What a disgrace. Leonard Fournette is having the worst beard I've ever seen in my life. If you guys get a good shot of it, look at it. Look at his beard. It's so bad looking. I actually want to see this now just because. Look at look at it, dude. He's got like zigzags in it. What is, what's going on? What are you, riffraff? It looks terrible. Anyway, Super Bowl champion Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm hype. You maybe are indifferent about the situation, but I'm excited about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Shit, don't